I'm going to be tying a damselfly nymph, and this is uh, the nymph that I'm going to be tying. And we're going to tie it in a buggy green olive. This fly can be tied in olive, or it can be tied in sort of a shammy, muddy color. And it's my understanding that that color really many times is dictated by the conditions of the water. If the water's muddier, then the nymph will take on a darker color and be uh, a muddy color, sort of a chamois, yellowish, muddy, something like that. Um, this is not a difficult insect to tie. Uh, it can be tied a lot of different ways, and I'm going to interject some of those different materials that we can be used instead of the ones I'm going to be using today as we go along. Uh, today I'm using a 3x long nymph hook number 10. It can be tied a little bit smaller but I really like this size. And the other thing I really like about this fly is that this is a versatile fly. You can catch trout with this fly, you can catch bluegill, crappie, bass, uh, shellcracker, it can be fished with a floating line or a sinking line. I have um, experienced this as an emerging insect and also just as a nymph when I was fishing. If you're fishing it as a nymph before it emerges, in the natural state, this insect moves forward by expelling water through its gills. And it's sort of an upward little little trek and it only moves a few inches at a time but this can really trigger a fish to go after that that bug it's best fish that way with a, a, a sinking line or maybe just a sink tip line letting it go down almost to the bottom and then short slower strips most people fish this fly and they strip too quickly that's one of the, of the problems I've also fished this when the, the fish were going crazy after emergers. And you've all seen the blue and the red, the rusty colored damselfly adults. Well, those adult, adults emerge from this little guy who lives in the water, comes up to the surface, gets his wings, and flies away. And that's when this, this insect in, the, in its natural state is, is, is most at, at um, most capable of being taken by a trout. Okay, he's coming up to the surface, and it really triggers a feeding frenzy. And I do mean sometimes it's a feeding frenzy. I have seen fish jump out of the water going after these things. When you're fishing it like that, I don't think this this insect, this fly, has to look as real. It, it, you can use a lot of other variations. Maybe use some some flashaboo things like that. We'll talk about that. It doesn't have to look quite as real if, if the fish are really in a feeding frenzy like that. Um, but it does have to be fished differently. Longer strips. You want a split shot about a foot up from the fly. And I have fished this, and you've got to get it just right, or the fish will not take it. And it's trial and error. But once you get it right, you're going to have success with this fly, whether it's trout or some kind of sunfish in a lake. The, um, any lake, any pond will have, will have damselflies in it. But you can also fly da uh, find damselflies in smaller streams, uh, the slower part of the stream, around a tree stump, something of that nature. So that's what we're going to tie. And again, I'm using a 3x long number 10 nymph hook. And the first thing I'm going to do is go right behind the eye and I'm going to just put down maybe um, an eighth of an inch behind the eye of the hook, maybe a little bit more than that, just a little thread base. I'm going to come back maybe a sixteenth of an inch, just cut off that tag in, and now we want to put on the eyes. These these insects have little eyes, and in reality, they're sort of flat and dish-shaped. But we're going to use eyes that I have purchased, pre-made. Here's some green ones. They also come in a clear color. Here are some, these are tagged adult damsel eyes blue, but you could certainly use these for the, the nymphal stage as well. 
You can also make these. You can take a piece of heavier monofilament and just burn each end and it sort of balls up and then you're going to tie that on. Or you can take a piece of monofilament and slide two small black or green beads on there, burn each end, and what it does is it holds that bead on there and you can use those as eyes as well. And, and you, if you look at the natural insect, they do have many times a little darker eyes, but you can get these, art, these eyes already made up in, in various colors, or you can make them yourself. And I have one that I purchased, and you can see it's very small. I'm going to put it right on top, catch it once, making a figure eight, and then I want to make sure I have it centered. And as you can see, it's maybe a sixteenth of an inch in back of the eye of the hook, giving me enough space to really tie in a few materials and, and put a head on the fly once I'm finished. And then I just want to secure that, making some figure eights, checking every once in a while to make sure it's in the center. I can make some figure eights like this. On the top, on the bottom, and around. And this would actually be a good place for a little head cement as well, just to make sure everything is in place. And I'm tying this on, on top of the hook. You can tie it on the bottom, but um, it's light enough. It's not going to make any difference really in the weight. Man, that's good. That's not going anywhere. A good place for a half hitch. So we have our eyes in place, and they look like they're pretty straight. Okay, now I'm going to take my... Um, thread now and I'm just going to cover the hook about almost back to the barb and then come back forward because what I want to do now is I want to put on some some um, lead free wire and just give it a little weight so and I try to use lead free wire because some places where you fish they will not allow you to fish with lead anymore Yellowstone for example all of your materials and your flies have to be lead free and just gonna lay that right on top and I'm going to catch that. And I always like to do this little thing where I, I, I just go behind the lead and that catches it really, really well. And then I bring my thread back just behind the eyes. And then I'm going to take my lead free wire and just candy cane it around. keeping some tension on it, but making sure I don't break the wire. And I'm going to wrap it up to right in behind the eyes. Then I will secure it. Just going to get that out of the way there. And then I want to candy cane over that lead-free wire coating it good with my thread that really helps it stay in place. And I'm, I'm not going to use any today, but this is also a really good place for a little head cement covering that um, thread over that lead-free wire. So this is going to give us some weight. This will also, this also helps build up the thorax because we're going to have a smaller abdomen back here and this is our thorax and that helps build up our thorax. Now this is another good place for a half hitch. I tend to over tie my flies but they don't ever fall apart. So then I'm going to come back here, come all the way back to the bend of the hook and I'm going to get ready to tie in the tail. The material that I'm using for the tail is a wood duck feather. And these come in this uh, sort of a mottled gray. They also come in a, a yellow, sort of a chamois yellow color. So if you're tying the, 
the insect in this green here, I'd probably use this. If I was tying it for muddy conditions, I would probably use the yellow wood duck. But, and, and the insect has three tails. We're not gonna count three of these feathers out though. We're just gonna pull some of the barbules out. And I, I want plenty of tail here on my insect, so I'm gonna pull out about that much, maybe three-eighths of an inch. And I'm gonna hold it so that it's, it's concave down. And I want to measure it, and I want the length of the tail to roughly be somewhere in the neighborhood of, of the gape of the hook. And that would be between this part of the hook and the point. So I'm going to measure that, and that's a little bit longer, but I can live with that. I'm going to like that. So use a pinch technique, hold it in place there. Pinch technique over and over, and I see my tails are kind of flaring out there, which is exactly what I want. So then I'm going to come and just secure the rest of that feather down because I don't want that going any place. I'm going to come up a little bit on the abdomen, got that in, secured in place there, cut off the butt section as close as I can, wrap that on down. And again, this is a good place for a half hitch. That way, if, if something happens and my materials come apart, every, the whole fly will not fall apart on me. Then I take my thread back to the tail. Okay. Now I'm ready to either attach a rib or uh, start on the body. The, tie that, the fly I tied earlier, I actually did not put a rib on there. And I actually like that better. I think it looks more natural. But I'm going to go ahead and, and put a rib on this one. And what I'm using is simply some metallic thread that I, I think I actually got it at Walmart. You can get it at any kind of sewing or craft store. But I'm just going to take one strand of that and I'm going to just lay it right on top of the hook. Come up, do a little pinch technique, catch that good bind that down. Again, good place for a half hitch. So I have my rib tied in. I'm going to take my thread back to where I tied in the tail. And now I'm going to put my body on. What I'm using for the body is some, uh, it's called Paxton's Buggy Nymph Olive. Any kind of dubbing that is not to be used for a dry fly. Now we, we, I want to bring out some thread here and I'm going to put some dubbing on here. And you really just need a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. And you want to dub your thread. And it doesn't have to be real, real tight because you want this to be, to be kind of buggy. Slide it up there. I know I'm going to need some more. Put some more on there. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try to taper an abdomen. Bring this thread back up here. It gives me a little more control. And it actually turned out just perfect. And you can see that I did not use very much dubbing at all. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my rib on. Now notice that I've been tying everything this way, everything clockwise. I'm going to go counterclockwise on my ribbing. So I'm going to take this ribbing and just hold it taut, but not too tight that I'm going to break it. And you can see this will give the abdomen a segmented look. It also gives it a little flash. So that this would be a, a fly that you could use in some, some muddy water. I'm going to tie it off. Once I get 
the ribbing up to the thorax and you can tell the thorax because that's where we tied in the, the lead free wire. Just cut that off there. Make sure it's secure. And the only thing we have left to do is the wing case and the legs and to dub the thorax. And the next thing I'm going to do is I want to take another duck feather and I want one that's nice and long. Now what I'm going to do is I want to take some more of the, the duck feather and I want to get a nice pretty wide section maybe this is probably at least a quarter of an inch maybe even wider this is going to do two things. It's going to serve as the wing case. It's also Then I'm going to separate them, bring them down, and they're going to form the legs. So I'm going to cut those as close to that central part of the feather as possible. And you can see the way I've cut them off. I'm holding the butt ends, and the tips are here. I want to flip those over so that it's concave pointing up, just shaped like that. Transfer it over here. I'm going to lay it right there, right where the abdomen joins the thorax. And I want to use my pinch technique and just catch that really good. Bind those ends down. This, again, is a really good place for a half hitch. Because I don't want that coming apart. And if I had to do it over, I probably would make that just a little closer to the, to the eye of the hook, but that's fine. Now we need to go back and dub the rest of the fly. So we need to dub the thorax. We've already dubbed the abdomen. So we go back to our buggy green olive dubbing. Put that on there. And again, it doesn't have to be real tight because you want this to look buggy. And I'm going to dub, just cover. I need a little bit more there. Take that off. I don't like that. Just a little bit more there. That might be enough. And I'm going to add just a little bit more because I really want to come between those eyes. That covers the head good. There, just like that. Okay. Take a little bit of that off. Okay. Take a little bit of that off. Clean it up just a little. Good. Okay, now I'm going to bring my thread right in front of the eyes. I bring this feather down and I'm going to catch it right there and it's the wing case now I am going to catch it twice I'm going to bring the thread behind the eyes and catch it again it's not going to go anywhere that way this is also a really good place for a half hitch and you want to make sure you get right under those feathers. It's secure. Nothing's going anywhere. Now you want to take a bodkin or a needle, something like that, and separate those duck feathers. So you have some on the left, some on the right. And go under the eye. Pull those back. tricky and if they don't lay down like you want them you can come back and catch it a time or two behind the eye so now that I have legs on the left legs on the right and I'm going to put a half hitch in there take a look at it happy with that and really the fly is completed except for putting in a half hitch, I mean a whip finish.
cut the thread off, take it out, flip it over, and I think those legs are too long, so I'm going to trim those off a little. So you can see we have a nymph. It has those buggy eyes, has a tail, a little bit of uh, flash on the abdomen. There's a nice wing case, legs. That's the damselfly nymph, and it'll catch fish.